Hi guys, I'm Arisa. Welcome to season two of The Bridge, Africa's number one financial literacy show brought to you by Business Day. This season, we're shaking things up a bit. We're going to be interviewing millennial business leaders and celebrities and talking to them about the business models and financial decisions behind their successful brands. Our guest today is Ubi Franklin. He's a serial entrepreneur who is best known as the founder of Made Men Music. He's also started projects like Instant Apartments and Instant Pickup. So stay tuned. London, New York or Lagos, business or holiday, home or office, you can now carry out your tax transactions from anywhere in the world. You can now file all your tax returns, pay online, get a receipt and even process your tax clearance certificate from anywhere in the world online and in real time. All you need to do is log on to www.firs.gov.ng and click on e-services and be introduced to the world of innovation, convenience and transparency from the FIRS. You can also pay stamp duty as you register a new company with the CAC or for other transactions that request time duty payment online. You can also file your withholding tax returns and determine the withholding tax deducted from you is in government covers so that you can get your receipt within 45 days as long as the deduction has been remitted. Yes, all of this and more online at www.firs.gov.ng slash e-services. FIRS, making tax administration as easy as ABC. Please note that all FIRS services are free of charge. This message is from the Federal Inland Revenue Service. It pays to pay your tax. Hi, Ubi. Hi, smart man. <laughs> Thank you for coming on the show. Thank you. Thank so, you, you are a very interesting guy. Thank you. You've run a record label. You're also a serial entrepreneur. You've started businesses like Instant Pickup and Instant Apartments. But my first question is basically, which was a very interesting thing when we were doing our research about you that I didn't know. You were Julius Agu's assistant. You yeah. started out as his assistant yeah. and you started working for people like AY Mako before you started your record label. Yeah. So how does someone go from being an assistant to a comedian to starting a record label? I want to know, you know, what spurred this idea? I don't know why. <laughs> I've never worked for AY. AY and I were friends. We've done business. But, okay. Um, uh, I've, I was PA to my elder brother. Okay. He was then doing the intern show. Mm. So I was PA to him. I followed him around, tying up business deals and all that before I became PA to Julius Agu. Okay. Because I had to do something somewhere with, with someone that is not my brother. You know, <laughs> I had to learn. You wanted to learn on yeah, your own. So, yeah, going around with Julius Agu every day, instead of just doing uh, picture, taking selfies, I was always keeping tabs on everyone we, we met mm. at the time both from a banking sector, uh, entertainment and everywhere. So I made those people as friends. Yeah. And then I took it from there. So, but what, so what got you interested in um, music okay, in particular? I, I'd already, while I was in, I, I went to Ghana to do a course. Um, we're doing shows. Mm. I helped pack all the students, we do shows. Because <laughs> I knew a few guys in Nigeria that were in the industry. So we do shows. I, had, I brought the band in 2008 to Ghana for uh, African Students uh, Conference or something. They mm. came and performed. That was the, that was the biggest <laughs> artist who had visited Ghana yeah. at the time. Um, so from there, I started, you know. So you're interested in the business yeah. side of music. Yeah, um, I'm interested in the business side of music, not the music itself. <laughs> not the music itself. Yeah. Okay, so starting a record label and managing big artists like Inyanya, like that's a very capital intensive um project yeah. so how did you raise the capital to start it you see i, I always say this a few years ago mm -hmm. it was easier to start why now. i'll tell you um i, I say it's always difficult though it's, a few years ago it was easier because the guys that play the music yeah right the guys that shadow the music avenues where to push your music mm. they don't really ask you for any money that much then <laughs> You just give me the incentives in you know, a round. But now, before that nigga plays the music, <laughs> you have to pay something. Oh. So, you know, you have to pay to the blogs to push you. Mm. Then there was there, there were no blogs. Then it was just maybe Linda Ekeji. Yeah. Um, and uh, not just okay. 
you know. So basically, you push the music through radio stations. Yeah, through radio stations. So you go to the radio stations yourself. Yeah. Now it wasn't something like you have to send an email. Then you mm. go to the radio stations and say, give them your CD. Mm. They hip your CDs out. If, if you have that relationship in the radio station, you try to push your CD in. But I would exactly. imagine things like you know, creating a music video. Um, the image of the artist all those things require some level of like capital yeah so okay um, um with that what we did was we started using personal funds okay um i always say this a friend actually paid for Inyaya's first video cookery okay uh first video um when we started working together so they were basically like your investor yeah no we just told uh, the maybe friend, an angel investor yeah, so, angel, they didn't no, want... so we just told the girl like yeah do you believe in us she said yes it's okay you know what we want to shoot the video. She gave us 800,000. Uh-uh. And that's how we shot the video. We shot the first one, it was not good, so we had to shoot another one. And the second one was not good, but we had to put it out anyway. <laughs> so, yeah. And like, we'll, we'll it. perfect it later. Yeah, we'll perfect it I later. love that. So, basically, it sounds like you started your business very organically, yeah, very um, organic. used personal funds, got it from friends, yeah. you know, and family, and just pushed through before, you know, yeah. you became, you know, the brand that you are. Yeah. Okay, let's talk about something else. Um, on the personal finance side, it's very interesting um, that even globally, a musician, you know, he blows, he makes a lot of money, he has a nice car, he dresses nice, he's always on flights. So to the audience or to the average person, they're living like a blown life, like they're a big guy. But I find that it's really difficult for them to sustain that income. So we find things like, you know, maybe someone gets sick and then they can't pay their hospital bills and, you know, they're soliciting for funds. Oh, um, you know, um, they their career ends, maybe they've gotten a little bit older and they're not as popular as they used to be and it's difficult to make ends meet. So the question now becomes, what did you use, you know, all the money that you made, like, to do? So what, what, what mistakes do you feel like artists are making when it comes to like keeping and growing their money they figured out how to earn to a large extent yeah. but what are they doing wrong in terms of keeping and growing it you see um it's a general thing um i won't say it's only mm. an Afri african thing it's a general thing mm. you need to be able to be disciplined with money mm. you know the way the money comes in is the same way it can go yeah it's the same way it can go you know i've been so i was talking to my guys on my way here mm. so last night i was just checking myself from 2000 and 12 mm. till yesterday i'd made 10 billion okay i love that i was just telling them yeah and i was like do you know that i've actually made this money mm -hmm. but the earlier part of the the major part of that money mm. was spent on flossing okay traveling you know buying cars you know doing so there were no that, real assets exactly so i didn't up. have the financial discipline at the time mm. to understand that i could invest that money in something else that would would generate me money what's your best investment what is the best investment since you went on this you know financially literate path what's the best investment you've ever made um so far my best investment would be made my music okay yeah because um it's, it's generated me a lot of income mm -hmm. um so because from there i say I, I, the reason why i say made my music is because the company did not only give me money mm -hmm. It built a brand for me. Mm. Now the brand has given me access to other opportunities. To get other so whatever I get, even if in the mm. next two hundred years, Midman Music is going to still be my best investment. <laughs> you know why? Yeah. Because it gave me access. Yeah, it gave me the brand, mm. the face. Now, just people knowing me, I can use that to unlock a few things. Mm. Now, it might it would have taken me more years in other businesses to get that. Maybe if I'm in politics, mm. you know. But the thing is, Midman Music working hard every day pushing the artists going behind holding the camera <laughs> videoing the artist people like who is that quiet yeah. hard working guy at the yeah. back so that kept building and building and building mm. you know so the the music side gave me that that pass. opportunity yeah. and i always say to a lot of, i was having a, a conversation with divan um, on friday mm. and i was telling him how we've all moved from just being artists or artist managers running around mm. every day for shows to now businessmen that run companies that have over a hundred staff, mm. you know, paying salaries over 10 million or to 15 million yeah, every month as, uh, you know, so I'm like, you can imagine if we knew this, <laughs> Early when on. we were really, yeah. when things were really, you know, really tough, tough. You know, it was but, like, you wouldn't know that then because you need 
to pass through those experiences experience for you to know first. the things now. Yeah. Okay, so with instant pickup and instant apartments, mm -hmm. right? Are they businesses that you pivoted to because? Like you were like, I want to take a break from this music stuff and I want to start something new or are there things that just coincide with made men music? Okay, I'm trying to build an ecosystem. Okay. Um, you know, some people come into an ecosystem mm. but I'm trying to build my own, then let people come in. I see. Okay, for example, um, there are companies that their expertise is just to, to create laptops. Mm. They don't create phones. Mm. But they, they can actually create phones. Mm. Now, so now they have a niche market. Okay. iPhone, Apple is has a niche market. Mm. Now people only come in mm. to find a way to get to then all the techno and co. They are for the mass market. Mm. So now you need to identify what you are going for. Yeah. So what I'm I'm going for right now is to build an ecosystem. Now, in the entertainment industry, entertainment industry is an ecosystem. Mm. Different uh, companies are inside that ecosystem feeding from there. So right now, if I go and do something that is already done, so I'm going to feed into an ecosystem, someone is a market leader. Yeah, that's crazy. You understand? So, I, so I'm trying to create a So a, what's a the business lead. model? Talk to me a little bit about the business model behind Instant Apartments and um, Instant, Instant Pickup. How do they make money? Okay, so Instant Pickup is um, like a laundry so you know you were, were saying something off camera mm -hmm. about um using your issues to solve a problem yeah. to solving a so problem entrepreneurs for, typically yeah. find a problem to solve to solve so and i, I travel a lot solution. so i give out when i travel then i didn't have the f uh, funding to have a house boy that will wash my clothes and everything so um when i travel <laughs> i heep those clothes i come back i heep those clothes. Yeah. I keep traveling 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 so in one month, I'll just keep a lot of clothes. So I now ask myself, there should be something that whether that I'm there or not, easy. yeah, makes it easy for people to move those clothes. So in 2016, I traveled to have a baby. And then while I was there, I was doing my laundry myself, <laughs> ironing myself, you know, and everything. And then something struck me like, you've been thinking about something instant, instant, instant. Yeah. Do something. So that's how instant pickup Pick up. came about. Yeah. And then if I travel, I hit hotel rooms. Mm. When I tried, I you like staying in apartment. Yeah, I like staying in apartment, or I like staying even in a suit mm. where I can leave the room and mm. just come into the sitting room, sit down, then maybe have meetings, mm. or just play my game and then return back to the room to sleep. So I now say, you know what, I need to create something mm. where I can, um, a platform where I can bring different people to come and source for apartments. For apartments. Yeah. So, so basically, with instant pickup, is it that you own a laundry service where you do the you, your company do, is responsible for the laundry, or is your business model exactly? So you you have different dry cleaners that yeah, you we have use. different dry cleaners that we use, and then you uh, just sort out the logistics. Yeah, we just give it to them. We, then we, we handle the logistics mm. and then make a percentage. So do you pay? Do do the revenue streams come like from both ends? So the end customer and the yes. dry cleaners yeah the end cost the end the end customer pays for the logistics okay and the dry cleaner pays the 10 percent. i see 10 percent, 20 percent. it depends so That's we have different uh, different agreements with different laundry mm. but for the instant apartment it's a flat 10 percent rate mm. so we we get everyone like we, for example instant apartment instant pickup mm. is feeding from instant apartment now because for all the apartments we have on that platform their laundry is going to be done done by, by instant pickup instant pickup so you see the you see the, the synergy yeah like it's, with it's, the it's moving then um I, have, I own a restaurant mm. so most of the apartments in lagos are especially in lekki mm. order their food from the restaurant okay do you understand so that's really not part of the ecosystem <laughs> but i'm still building other two other things, things that i'm launching so different yeah. multiple streams of income yeah. i love it Okay, so you're a very busy guy, like you've started a lot of different, you know, kinds of businesses and everything. So as an entrepreneur, you know that, you know, we fail at many things. So what's your one money mistake that the biggest money mistake you've ever made and how did you recover from it? <sighs> Calls for pause. The biggest money mistake, if I say it, <laughs> I'm going to be on social media tomorrow. <laughs> Share, share. The biggest money mistake I think is um, money I spent on a, uh, a celebration. On a celebration? Yeah. What kind of celebration? That's the biggest money mistake. <laughs> biggest oh. money mistake in my life. Why? Uh, Why? But you see, I think the biggest money mistake for me was money for my wedding. Okay. That was the biggest money mistake because um, a few guys that had experience at the time were telling me, see, I just do something small, go home, you know? Then when I see people do 
big scale weddings. I just yeah. laugh because <laughs> I see that it's, it's a party just for yeah. a day. And once it's done, it's done. Yeah, they say oh, memories, but you see, you can create memories without spending that big that kind of money. That. So I think that's one of the biggest money mistakes I made. Fair because so if I'd known, I'd have done something smaller, smaller. classier than what I, I what did. What you did? Because I did like almost <laughs> three months of different events. Wow, yeah. wow. Maybe that's I was a, a lot. I was a dango today. <laughs> That's a lot. Yeah, so I think that's a, that's a, that's the biggest money mistake. Okay, you see, so what? You see, the thing is, every mistake. You see how you, you have I, lessons. How I recovered yeah. from me was what came about the fruit that came out, yeah. later, which is my son. That's it. Oh, that's so, amazing. Yeah. That's children are a blessing. Yeah. Um. Okay. So, what's the one thing that will be Franklin splurges on? So it's great to save and invest, but you know we like the good life. So what's the What's the one thing that you have to spend your money on that makes you super happy, but it's not necessarily like an asset or a business? I love to see people happy. Okay. So I spend more money on people, building people around me because you see the people around you yeah. are part of your hype. Mm. You know, I came here with two guys. Okay. Those guys, I've known them for 20 years. Wow. So we build a relationship from school, from secondary school to the university, all the way. Do you understand? So, those are the people. Those, I love you it. Know, yeah, so you know, giving. Yeah, giving. Because it gives so, you like a different fulfillment. Yeah. So like I wake up on Saturday, I just woke up in the morning. I said, okay, I wanted to give out 5K to 20 people, you know, and a few people sent in their account numbers. I was saying. So I always just <laughs> want to meet a few people's needs here and there. Yeah. Now, I love designers, right? I love <laughs> so to you wear. So you on that yeah, as well. I, yeah, I love designers. You like designers. to look good. I, like, I love to look good. So, and I love to wear something original. Okay. You know, so, but just making sure that once you've, dressed up like that that i love mm. nice spaces <laughs> nice house beautiful um well powerful sounds cars. like you like to splurge on a lot <laughs> yeah so just a few things so because yeah. you cannot have the car the nice house a nice car the nice outfit mm. and then people around you are not happy mm. that's a big problem i love it yeah. so you've shared that at one point in your life you've made 10 billion um yeah. naira when you made your when did you make your first million naira how did you make it and how did you how did you feel when you made it um, I've, before I made my first millionaire yeah. of mine, yeah. I'd seen 20 million, 30 million, mm. carry the cash. Mm. That was my brother's money. Okay. That wasn't mine. So, um, it wasn't really a big deal. It wasn't really a big deal. <laughs> so, when pushing the, an artist, mm. pushing, and then we started making money, and then after two shows, um, one of, when things got better, mm. after two shows, I had my own money of 1.5, what there about, yeah. Okay. So, I carried the money. Is this my money? <laughs> because it was cash. Cash. <laughs> so, I carried the money. I was like, wow. And I, I went to the um, the hotel. So, when we went for the show, I, I would carry my backpack. I didn't want to keep the money in the hotel. <laughs> so, when I even got back from, you know, you know, <laughs> you know when, you, when you're carrying money, yeah. cash, everybody's a suspect. <laughs> Do you understand? Yeah. So, I got back from the show. Even at the show, I was always, you know, <laughs> trying to make sure that trying to put their hand yeah, in my bag. trying to make sure that there, there's no enemy around me. Oh, why are you hugging me too much? Exactly. No, I, you know, on that night I was not even hugging. Hey, Obi, what's up, bro? You know. <laughs> then um, I got back to the hotel, so I raised the hotel bed, put the money under, and lay down on it. So I was, you know, in my, you know, I had a dream that night. Yeah. That the the money was missing. <laughs> so. <laughs> <laughs> so you, you should understand where I'm going yeah. from. So I woke up, and then you know the bed was really high. So I woke up, I started looking started for the money. Checking. You know, I forgot that I actually put it under the bed. <laughs> so I now finally saw the money. I carried that, I, I carried that back to the bathroom. Everything I was doing that day, until we got to the airport, we flew back to Lagos, and I put the money in my account. That was the first major money that you yeah, made. Like I love mine. this story so much. So, yeah. I love it. Um, okay, so. What are the, what's the biggest advice that you'd give someone who is, say, wanting to enter the music industry, he wants to be the next Ubi Franklin, what, you know, what are the money lessons that you would share with them? Um, bulk money will never come. Mm. Save, save those little things, you know, part of the mistakes I made was um, always thinking that that bulk money will come. Mm. Do you understand? When um, I hit, then I'll I, save an invest. Yeah, exactly. I'm waiting for that um, mm. uh, uh, that brand that will come and sign us 200 million, million. 100 million, 50 million. Mm. And then when you look back, you find out that 
The period where you were dissing all those things, you had actually made that money. But you spent it. You spent it because the money was coming 1 million, 3 million, 2 million, there, and then you spend the money and waiting for the day um, some a brand will give you. So my advice to anyone that's going to come into the music industry is simple. You need to understand that from the day you start making 50,000, 100,000, if you start saving, you know, setting your priorities properly. So it has right. to be a systematic yeah, thing. You have to keep putting that money somewhere. Mm. You know, um, like I was in 2000 and 15 somebody introduced me to bitcoin mm. right i just bullshit it <laughs> you know until it became a big deal it, it started becoming a big deal and then i put some money there and then after that i started making businesses and then i was being paid with using using bitcoin, bitcoin. you understand so if i so you're kind of ahead of the curve exactly now. so you can imagine in 2015 2014 2015 when bitcoin started mm -hmm. and I was traveling abroad, um, <laughs> going for uh, American shows, everything. They're paying us in dollars. Mm. Can you mm. imagine if I used that money at that time and just put it, put in, it Bitcoin. in Bitcoin? I'm sure that last By year, now, yeah, it would boy, have been different. But yeah. anyway, I still don't regret it because I still have investment there. Yeah. You know, because I was smart enough at the time too. And you know, that's always, with every investment, that's always the smartest yeah. time. When is not yet like something that everyone is talking about? Not like, not like yeah. <laughs> from when you arrived that's a topic for another <laughs> day but i want to know what what is your um money philosophy so your smart money ma mantra the one thing that you absolutely have to do with your money you know no matter what put it somewhere mm. you see I, I i believe that money has to make money mm, i love that so, i love that I tell people, my consulting firm actually pays me my salary. <laughs> Do you understand? Because I also believe that if you want me to work for you right mm. now, you have to be paying me take home monthly of 15 million. Because sitting in all my businesses, I make way more than that. More than that. In, in the month. So you have to pay that's me that. Very, that's very put interesting. Me, put me at the penthouse floor of, a, of uh, the, <laughs> the top apartment in VI, or Banana Island. You know, give me two cars, it security. Has be, you know, yeah, it has to be your while. It. So let, yeah. just to round up, my final question that we ask all the guests is, if you got a hundred million naira, like today in bulk, how would you spend it? How would you invest it? Um, I always have things where I put money. Mm -hmm. You know, now I always say, the, I always do this thing. You have to keep your money somewhere yeah. for the head for the head of the money to be very calm. <laughs> you understand? That's, all, I, that's what I always say in pigeon English. <laughs> so um, first, you have to keep the money somewhere. Yeah. You see, and I always tell people, it's more risk for you to have all the money to start up a business. Mm. Because once you have all the money to start you're up a business, you're comfortable. You're comfortable, you will lose it. Mm. Now, but once you're striving to start up, okay, there's something I'm about to start. Mm. It's costing me about a billion. Mm. But I've only raised close to 400 million of it okay right and now because of it, it took me so much time to raise that money <laughs> so it's tough now so i'm careful where i'm spending before we came on yeah, uh, i was just tough. talking to my guy i was like yeah. call that guy <laughs> let him ev everything get re uh, let let's see everything ready before we pay but before what i would have done was i'll send money to the guy <laughs> waiting you know so now you have to be careful how you're spending so if you give me 100 million right now i know what to do with it yeah. and in, in in so six, how would seven you, months. How would you spend it? Like, would you spend business. it on a holiday? No. Would you? No. So you would invest all of it. Yeah. In I'd business. rather not go for a holiday in, in one year, right? And spend that money, and then next year go for two holidays. I love it. Thank you, Ubi. Yeah. This was such a great interview. I'm sure, like, people watching it at home are going to learn so much from Thank you. Thank you. I wish you good luck in Thank all you. your endeavors. Thank you. VAT, Value Added Tax, is a tax paid on all goods and services and remitted by the seller of the goods or provider of the service to government. 5% VAT is added to the total cost of goods and services in Nigeria and when remitted to government is used for funding development. The VAT you pay will be used by government to develop our transport infrastructure like roads and railway lines to continually improve our educational sector by building more schools and upgrading existing ones to provide adequate security and a better quality of life for us all. Pay your VAT. Make your contributions to the development of Nigeria. It pays to pay your tax. So that was a very insightful episode with lots of stories from Obi Franklin. So the highlights for me were, one, 
it doesn't matter where you start, it's most important to have a vision and leverage on the opportunities that come your way to create multiple streams of income. Ubi started out as an assistant and went on to create several businesses that were successful. The second thing is, it doesn't matter how much you earn, it matters how much you're able to keep and grow. So if you make 100 million and you spend 100 million, what you have left is zero. And the third thing is, like Ubi said, don't wait for the big money. Start to save and invest systematically. Because a lot of young millennials think that, well, I'll just wait till I hit before I start to save and invest. And what happens is you just become a revolving door for your money when you could have been systematically saving and investing towards your financial future. Thank you so much for watching this episode of The Bridge. See you next time.